kingdom of Bhutan lies at the southern tip of the Tibetan plateau. Until the 1970s, the borders of this Buddhist country were closed to outsiders, helping to preserve their traditions amid the swirl of a modern and industrialized world. For centuries, the Bhutanese, like their Tibetan and Nepalese neighbors, have lived off the land. Farmers and herders are all sustained by the glacial waters, which the locals refer to as white gold. Bhutan, like most other countries within the Hindu Kush region, is harnessing the meltwater to create hydroelectricity, which generates much needed energy and revenue for the kingdom. But the very same glacial meltwater that sustains the kingdom is threatening to destroy the villages and farmlands that line its rivers. The Himalayan meltdown is creating hundreds of high altitude lakes which contain massive amounts of water. At any moment, an earthquake or avalanche could trigger a glacial lake outburst flood, obliterating all in its path. It is among the most feared natural disasters throughout the Himalayas. This rare footage shows a glacial lake outburst flood ripping through the village of Punaha in 1994. 21 people died, a year's worth of crops destroyed. I lived here when the lake burst in 1994. I saw people picked up by the water and carried away. Yaks and horses were washed away. Even today, I don't like to go near the river because I'm very afraid of another glof happening. Karma lives with her elderly mother and one daughter, just meters from the edge of the Fo Chu River. She was born here and narrowly survived the 1994 glacial flood. She lives in constant fear that another may strike. <laughs> When it comes to myself, I may be able to run away. But I worry for my elderly relatives who may not be able to escape immediately. The 1994 Glof originated high in the mountains, where the glacial lakes are rising at an alarming rate there are more than 2,600 glacial lakes in Bhutan. This one, just above the village of Lunana, is among the most dangerous. Lake Tortomi is now a moonscape of rocks, sand, and mud, and is gradually filling with meltwater. By contrast, the adjacent Lake Rapstring is a fully formed lake 100 meters deep. Separating the two is an unstable 35-meter moraine wall of sediment deposited by the melting glacier. As lake levels rise from the melting glaciers, so does the pressure on this precarious dam. If Lake Tortomi ultimately overtops the earthen wall, a superglacial lake with 53 million cubic meters of water could burst causing a flood three times the size of the one in 1994. Like during 1994 Glof, when 18 million cubic meters of water was released, now you are talking about 53 million cubic meters of water to be released if the worst case scenario occurs in the future. As a matter of national urgency, the Bhutanese government, with assistance from an international climate change adaptation fund, that was established by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and partner organizations such as the United Nations Development Program, the Global Environment Facility, the World Wildlife Fund, and the Government of Austria has launched an ambitious project to prevent another disaster. The fight to save their country from a glacial flood begins promptly at 7.45 a.m. 
at this base camp near Lake Tortomi. 350 men and women have traveled nine days through treacherous mountains for the opportunity to work on one of the kingdom's most important and ambitious projects. Because of the high altitude and the risk of avalanches, heavy machines cannot be used, so workers are equipped with only hand tools. They work with a sense of urgency to remove boulders and debris. They are in a race against time to clear a channel that they hope will drain Lake Tortomi by five meters. Basically in here we are talking about the hydrostatic pressure that is built as the ice starts to melt and then the water level rises. So basically we are releasing the pressure. We'll try to remove all the soils and then now we are, we are going to let out the water from there. Lake Tortomi sits at 4,300 meters. The air is thin and the work is dangerous and difficult. You, you can very well see over here that, you know, the, we have to work with the, these big, big boulders, which are very loose. The water is very, very cold, maybe one to two degrees centigrade. Here, the quest to contain the Himalayan meltdown provides economic opportunity for stalwart laborers. It is well worth the effort for workers like Shem Doji Doya, who trekked 14 days in the hopes of making enough money to start a new life. With the money that I earn from working here, I plan to open a small store so that I can support my family. This worker, who has a single name of Zam, says although the work is hard, she is grateful to have a job. I came from across Bhutan. My husband passed away quite a while ago, but this is the first time that I have been able to support my family. I'm so grateful to have this job. To implement such kind of project in such kind of places like Lonana at this altitude is very, very difficult. Slope the one is to two and above that. Project planners struggle to supply the workforce with food and tools in this remote and rugged location. In addition to the 300 workers at Tortomi, another 200 local herdsmen were employed to transport the 60 tons of supplies to the site. The team considered using helicopters, but the terrain and unpredictable weather made it impossible. Using skilled yak and horse herders was not only more reliable, but provided significant social and economic benefits. Tsering Geltsen and his team of horses have carried 106 loads of supplies from the town of Gasa to Lake Tortomi. Like many horsemen, he has no formal education. I'm very happy. With this money, I will buy another horse so that I can make even more money. He has returned home after an entire summer of leading his horses to the project site. The money will sustain Geltsen's family for an entire year. The money that the horsemen and women have earned during the three-year project will buy food, shelter and education for their children. It may also buy something else for their country. Precious time to prevent a deadly glacial flood. A very important project for Bhutan, not only for our department, it's for the country. If my project succeeds, uh, the life of humans are saved, so that is a pride which I have. The Bhutanese are now installing early warning systems along the rivers, ensuring that both its people and critical infrastructure are prepared for a glacial flood. In the Himalayas, I think uh, this is the first time that uh, such work is being done, and then uh, quite a lot of the countries like uh, Nepal, Pakistan, India, they are all observing us how we are doing and how successful we will be. Next summer, the Lunana Bell will once again call the workers to one of the most challenging climate-changing adaptation projects in the world.
This bell is also a call to action for Bhutan and a signal to the world of what can be accomplished when a committed nation adapts to the Himalayan meltdown. Thank you.